New arrivals at Waters and Stanton, Ellicraft USA send us the first CE certified K4 for our evaluation. Russia, Lab 599 send us the first TX500 CE certified for evaluation. Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I recently needed an 18 megahertz trap for my antenna work. I didn't have one, but I decided that I would make one as it's quite a simple operation. Now this is not a new idea, but I thought that viewers to this video channel might need perhaps a reminder as to how easy it is to make an antenna trap. And of course, it's very satisfactory to do a bit of construction work that results in a useful article that costs very little to make. An antenna trap is nothing more than a simple parallel tuned circuit. And for that, you need a coil and a capacitor. Now, it's very easy to wind a coil. All you need is a former. And I went down to my local store, B&Q, would you believe? and purchased a couple of pipe joiners. These joiners are approximately one and a half inches diameter. They have clean, smooth ends and are relatively soft to drill, so they make an ideal former. I drilled a hole at either end of the former and inserted a nut and bolt with a solder tag, which will give me the anchor point for the coil. I used a bit of gash plastic coated wire and managed to get nine turns onto the former, which to me looked roughly right. The next thing I needed was a capacitor. Now, there's a very easy way of making a capacitor, and that is to use a length of coax cable that is open-ended. This coax cable has a capacity formed between the inner and the outer conductors, and all you need to do is to solder the coax cable across the coil, leave the other end open circuit, and you have a capacitor. I use the length of RG58 coax, which we sell. It's got a very tight outer weave, which means to say you get maximum capacitance. I cut a length which turned out to be 28 centimetres long, and that measured approximately 17 picofarads. This was all cut and try, and when I checked the resonance circuit of the trap, it turned out to be 16 megahertz, somewhat too low for what I needed. To find the resonant frequency of a trap, it's very easy, provided you have an antenna analyzer. All you need to do is to make a single turn, or maybe two turns, across the output socket of the antenna analyzer. This forms a coupling loop and you couple that loop loosely to the trap and you can then immediately see the resonant point of that trap. Now the beauty of using coax cable to form the capacitor is that just by cutting the coax cable slightly shorter you reduce the capacitance and therefore you raise the frequency of the trap. So to get the trap onto the resonant frequency you require, just nibble bit by bit the end of the coax until you arrive at the frequency desired. I ended up with a length of coax approximately 20 centimetres long, and all I did then was just to tuck it into the coil former, and I had my 18 megahertz trap. The power rating of a trap is primarily dependent upon the voltage rating of the capacitor. RG58 used in this way should easily handle 100 watts. For lower frequencies, you'll need a larger former with more turns and a longer length of coax cable. But it's great fun and it doesn't take too long to arrive at the operating frequency that you desire. Thanks for supporting the Waters and Stanton video channel. We bring you regular videos about new products, new ideas, tips, tricks, all sorts of things relating to ham radio. 
Thanks for your continued support. Please remember to press the subscribe button and we'll be back soon.